Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you yet again with another video and of course I've got a lot to share with you today. Actually, I'm in back in overload of diecast situation where I can't show everything that I have in one episode. There's just no way to do it. Um, but we got a lot of items here to show. I picked out 25, I think-ish vehicles to look at today um some of which are brand new stuff i found in the store which is you know magnificent i don't i guess i i guess i do find stuff in stores every now and then um not nothing too crazy but uh one thing i was excited about seeing is this new uh hot wagons series from hot wheels uh these are interesting because there's some new wheel types which is very cool we got an audi uh, we got a Volvo. So I'm excited to get these open. Now, these are all metal bases as well. So they're heavy, very heavy. So they're this is like the, the Walmart, well, at least in the U.S., the Walmart exclusive line, like themed line, where they're like three bucks a car or something like that. And typically they're just like full deco tampo wise, I guess. So they have a lot of tampos on them. Uh, but now we get treated with metal bases on these on these cars. So very interesting, kind of like the in-between premium stuff. So it's not quite Hot Wheels premium, but it's a step in between. So we got the GTO wagon. That's a really cool casting. We've got the uh, Chevy Nova wagon, also with a metal base. Very cool. The one thing I'm thrown by, I think, is this uh, so far as the... Uh, Audi RS6 Avant. Have we gotten this with a metal base before, or is this the first time for that? The Volvo, I know we got once with a metal base. Hmm, I don't know. And then the one that everybody's after, of course, is a Datsun 510 wagon. And I've got one on a destroyed card. So, yep, I open stuff. So who cares? So that's awesome that I was able to get it. So I got this car. Uh, this Obviously, this one's going to be the hardest one to find in your area. People are going to hoard these. Anytime they find them, they are going to buy all of them. And uh, we've got one in a wrecked car. So that's fantastic. All right. So I'm excited about that. So we got the, the Hot Wagon set, uh, the whole set, which is pretty awesome that we were. I was able to, to get that because... I was kind of scared of getting it, especially when it comes to that Datsun 510 wagon that I was ever going to find it. And I would never find it locally. I was out of town and I found it. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, also found the full set. Well, actually, I don't know if it's the full set. I've got some Matchbox collectors, and I think these are brand new. Um, yeah, I think they're 2024 releases. The first five are out, and I picked up four of the five. Three of those I found at one time, and then I stumbled across this Bugatti, Bugatti in the set, which is this one here. Stumbled across that at, um, I think, the same place I got the wagons from, so. Pretty nifty. Uh, so I got the Bugatti. Uh, this one has rubber tires. It's like a matte blue. Uh, I've got the Nissan Z in blue. Of course, we're going to open all this stuff. I got the, the Lexus LX, which, I don't know, the wheels on this look so tiny. So that's, I don't know why they selected these wheels for it. Not, not a very good choice, but here we go. We got it. We got the casting. And then probably the coolest one in the set, actually, is this 1994 Mitsubishi 3000 GT. So pretty nifty there, too. And I think these actually have, I think this has rubber tires or something. I'm not sure. They look like basic wheels. I don't know. I guess we're going to find out once we get it open. And then I still had that. I picked this up actually a while ago, but decided to go ahead and we'll open it today too, since we're looking at Matchbox Collectors. This is from, I believe this is from last year. So I'm pretty sure it is, but there's that as well. So stoked on getting those two sets. Uh, we're not really sets. I'm missing the panel van from the Matchbox Collector set. And it was there. I just didn't grab it. So... We left that one behind. Um, speaking of stuff found in stores, I also picked up an M2. Don't do that very regularly. But I've wanted one of this new casting for a while, and finally I came across one that just had basic, uh, you know, a basic paint job on it. No Coke or Pepsi or Sprite or any of that garbage. So I decided to go ahead and scoop this up to check out this tooling. So I picked up an M2. It's been a while since I picked up an M2, but we got one here. 
So that's pretty neat. I get to look at that casting. Uh, in the mail, I got this guy, this uh, minty green Porsche 964 Urban Outlaw. So we're going to open that sucker up. That is a nice color. I will say it is a nice color. I almost didn't even go for this one, but I'm like, you know what? It's an RLC Porsche. I only, I think you only could order one. I think it was a one limit, but I don't even know if they would have had two if I would have ordered two. But yeah, you know, I collect Hot Wheels Porsches, so we had to have it. Grabbed her up. So we'll open up that. Um, we got, what else did we get in the mail? Uh, oh, I found one other thing in stores too. Uh, I found this in the store. Mongoose bikes, DMX factory team. So I had to scoop that, that van. I think I have the Schwinn one, but I don't, it's the Schwinn, the Schwinn Chevy, but I didn't have the Mongoose Dodge. So I had to scoop that one up. <clears throat> uh, then in the mail, I got this Grana's Racing. This one flew under the radar for me, and that's unfortunate because I think, I don't know how much the Ultra Reg sold for on their website, but they sold them separately. And I don't know how much they charged for it. I have no idea how much they went for it. But by the time I got to this and figured out that this was a thing, the Ultra Reds were gone. Uh, from Grana's Racing, it's, a, I guess, supposed to be a drag racing Supra. It looks pretty cool. Uh, we're going to open it up and take a look at it, of course. Uh, you can get this off the Grana's Racing website. But unfortunately, the Ultra Reds are sold out. Again, I don't know how much they sold them for. But it was too late anyway. So... That'll be an ultra red. That's going to be difficult to get down down the line. All right. Uh, what's next? We got more Auto World. Uh, well, mainly this. I got this ultra red from my buddy Die Castro. You know the deal. And so I got this actually a while ago. We're finally going to open it up now. So I'm still missing two ultra reds from this set. Uh, so and I'm, of course we're going to open up the version A and version B of the vehicles as well. Um, but the two that I'm missing, let me get to the set here. I'm missing the Chevy Corvette and the Nissan Z. And those are definitely going to be the most expensive ones in the set. Uh, the Chevy Corvette is a golf livery. So anytime there's golf livery and it's a chase, you know, that's a combination of expense, you know, things that make it expensive. And then the Nissan Z is the brand new casting for this set. So that's also going to, you know, probably command a premium as well but we'll find them we'll find them eventually um all right so there's that stuff and then we got stuff from my buddy uh dumas who he sent me a big box of and we're going to slowly chip away at it as these weekly videos roll on uh, but i picked out some johnny lightnings that we're going to open we got two racers edge i'll explain that in the second segment he explained it for me kindly on a post-it note I wasn't sure on the percentage, so that's cool to have that. So we're gonna we're gonna look at these two. There's a Camaro and a GTO, and then we got three other older ones. This uh, Chevy Malibu, this crazy frightening lightning, crazy Mysterion thing, and this Cadillac Eldorado pace car. I didn't even know they made a convertible Cadillac Eldorado. And Johnny Lightning. I don't think I've ever, I don't remember having it. Or maybe I do remember having it, but just not on like any sort of pace car livery. And that's maybe why. I don't remember this casting, actually. I don't remember this casting either. That's different than the, uh, I think there's a Malibu casting, another one that's different than this. So this is cool. This is really neat to look at these. This guy is just, you know, this is Dumas right here in a nutshell. He's a he's a frightening lightning himself. <laughs> he likes all this wacky stuff. And uh, that's cool, man. I mean, like, zingers are, like, his favorite Johnny Lightnings. I'm like, neoclassics are his favorite Hot Wheels wheels, I think. And I'm like, you're you're just a little off, buddy. But, uh, but we love you. So, anyway, very cool. There's that. And uh, then... Uh, from a buddy Jay, you know, Jay sends me a box every week and I've got some cool stuff from him And this is some pretty neat stuff. So we've got Of course, he sent me another motor max car and this is the GTO in orange I've got it in yellow did not have it in orange. So this is awesome. I'm gonna get to open up this. It's an American graffiti 
packaging is all faded and gross and whatever, but they, you know, that doesn't matter to me because we're going to open it up. So that's cool. And then we've got this really weird thing, this car and driver shock racers performance tool to make your car cool. Try me and feel the shock racer suspension system. Okay, so what it appears is you get a little metal ratchet thing, a little mini one. You turn it on the bottom of the car and you can either loosen or tighten up the suspension. That is a wild idea for a 164 scale car. So, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I don't even know. Road Champs made this. Road Champs made a lot of weird stuff. So, I guess that's right up there, Allie. Uh, but, yeah, we will, we will definitely enjoy peeking at that. That's going to be a fun one, too. And then he sent me a cool, uh, cool Classics. 2010 Ford Shelby GT500 Super Snake. I think I might have this already. And he covered it in um, painter's tape. Did he? I'm sorry if he did this to protect. If he did this to hide this from me until he opened it. Because there's something weird about it. I apologize because we're going to open up the tape right now. Mm, it doesn't appear so. I think he did it to just protect the blister. It's funny because he pays a lot of attention to the way he packs stuff, and he packs stuff immaculately, and I'm like, buddy, we're going to rip her open anyway. But this car I actually already have, bud, so I don't think I'm going to open that up. I will move it on to someone that needs it, but I do have this car already. But I do appreciate it anyway. All right, so we got a lot of stuff to get to here, so we should probably flip this sucker around and get to cracking them open stay tuned all right so let's kick things off in the second half of this video by opening up this beauty right here this is the uh porsche 964 redline club magnus walker release i think definitely the attraction to this car is not necessarily the magnus walker factor any longer even though he's pretty cool but it is the color it is a like a spectra flame minty green kind of thing and i don't think they've ever put out a car and this is a new color so new color for spectra flame that's pretty exciting i imagine for anybody um that collects Hot Wheels. So we're going to go ahead and open up this Porsche. I am pretty pumped, actually, to get a peek at this. We got a bad tear here on the opening of the box. Uh, this, not numbered. So as our RLC releases haven't really been numbered lately, this one is not numbered either. Well, well, come on now. I haven't struggled like this on this type of packaging in a long time are we what is going on here does it not want to be open there we go get out okay there it is kind of clean up our mess here right away all sorts of cardboard bits all right <clears throat> look at the color it's nice does look pretty cool uh the casting's pretty neat it does have an opening engine compartment chromed engine in there pretty nifty um there is a little flaw in mine unfortunately you got that right there it's like a weird like scratch or something going on right there it's uh i can't tell if that's i think that's part of the black whatever black paint or something outlaw there's your tail lights um, yeah, I, you know, it looks good. It's not like the most exciting RLC piece, I will say that, but the color is nice, I will also say that. The color combination is nice, I like the plaid seats, that's pretty nifty as well. Um, pretty well detailed, it's got the Fuchs wheels or whatever they are. So, I'm gonna say, yeah, it's cool. I, is it worth... Is it worth the money? That's always the question with these RLC pieces. So this thing is like $25, right? It's 25 bucks plus shipping. So you can do the math on that and figure it out for your area what you normally would pay. But is this worth it? That is the question. And I'm on the fence about that. You know, I, it's worth it because obviously I bought it. So, right. I mean, I thought it was worth it. <clears throat> so to get it. But value for money when you're comparing it to some other diecast brands i can't i can't say i can really get behind it all that much 
All right. So there's that. All right. <clears throat> moving on. <clears throat> let's open up. Let's get this M2 out of the way, actually, before we move on to some other Hot Wheels stuff. This is uh, GMC Sierra. You know, I don't pick up M2 very often. Oh, you know what? I was actually going to try to save the box, <laughs> and I just ripped it. Ah, oh, geez. The reason why I was going to save the box is because storage at the moment comes at a premium in this room, and it's nice to have something to store the car in, so I was going to maybe even just put it right back in the box. But... Uh, we already ripped it. Whatever. Just forget about it. It's not happening. This is lim limited to 9,000 pieces worldwide. Uh, you guys are familiar with the M2 packaging. We don't really need to get into it. Cardboard box, acrylic case. Um, these acrylic cases are not... These plastic cases are not like the quality of like premium die cast you would find. They're a little bit thinner. Uh, they tend to be a little bit easier to scratch. Uh, this plastic base, you know, it is what it is. It's like a $6 car or whatever at, at Walmart. It's not super premium die cast. But M2 does come out with some cool stuff. They had some cool toolings, new castings that have come out recently. And um, I am not opposed to picking up. I don't pick up a lot of M2, but I had to pick up one of these. We're going to unscrew it from the base. The other thing I don't like about these is there's two screws. I wish it was just one screw and a peg. That's much easier to put on, you know, take on and off of the base. But here is the truck. OBS Chevy. Hey, it rolls nice. Nice basic color. GMC right there in the front. Grill. I think they make a Chevy and a GMC variant with a different grill. The front end piece. The front end is actually a separate, whole separate piece. The bumper and, and all that. We've got some engine detail in there. We've got side mirrors. We've got a red interior, metal on metal, of course. Um, they do different variations of something back here. That's why this is like a plastic insert piece with the wheel. At least I think it is why they do that. Uh, no fold-down tailgate. That's okay. It's not necessary. And we get to insert a details for taillights. So... Here's the irritating thing sometimes about opening hoods. I just opened this hood one time. Okay. And now I want to shut it. And it's not staying shut. <clears throat> so I hate that. It looks good on this side. But not on this side. So I don't know what's causing that. But uh, that's slightly, slightly irritating. Would you... Shut? All right. Well, it's not shut. All right. What I, I don't know what I think about this casting. It's it's pretty cool. It looks all right. There's something about the stance of it, I think, that's a little bit off. It doesn't, like, sit, like, level like you would think the truck would sit. I mean, I know, you know, maybe someone modified something that would make, you know, give it a little bit of rake. I don't think that it should have that. I mean, I guess maybe if you load it up the bed, it'd be flat. But there is just something about the... uh stance to it that I don't necessarily care for too much. But, eh, all in all, nothing to really complain about, except for that hood. Alright, next, moving on, moving on, let's go to this fast, hard, what, fast wagons, hot wagons, hot wheels, hot wagons. And we've got the custom GTO wagon, and I think all these like have like a new wheel type on them. So five cars in the set. We've got all five. Again, these are found in Walmart. Uh, looking at the back of the card, actually, they are probably found in other countries because you've got different languages on the back of the card. So I don't know in other countries where you're going to find these. Here, it's Walmart. So these, for the people that still like race Hot Wheels down tracks and stuff, I'm guessing... These are going to be pretty pretty good because you get the, the metal body, metal base, and then a plastic tire. And a new wheel type. That looks pretty good. I like this casting. You got the dog in the back. GTO wagon. Pretty cool. Typically only used in premium because I don't think they've ever made a plastic base variation of this. So we get it here in like a semi-premium. 
and uh, I like it. I think it's good. I the the uh, we've got some a uh, little bit of a tampo issue right there on the side. No big deal. But hmm, I I, I like that one. That's cool. <clears throat> All right, moving on. We've got the Volvo. 850 Estate, what a super cool wagon, one of the coolest uh, station wagon type vehicles of all time, I would say. These things are bricks, they're shaped like bricks, and they're pretty nifty. So this one is got the white metal base, plastic tires, and again, another new wheel type. So... And it looks all right. We've got, uh, you know, just the slight flaws in the tampo on the on the wheel. If you're getting picky. And again, these aren't like the Hot Wheels Premium line. They're somewhere in between mainline and premium, so you're not going to get, you know. The nice thing about that is you're going to get tampos all over the place. I will say this. The nice thing about this for sure, so you don't get the rubber tires. That's going to be the big knock on them, right? That's why people are not going to be super into them is because they don't have the rubber tires. They have plastic wheels. But what you do get is graphics and tampos all over it. So you get headlights, you know, and taillights and all of that. And they're tampos. They're not that dot matrix printing that you see on the Hot Wheels Premium line. So that might actually be why I'm going to collect this, like these sets, maybe. I think they're cool. I don't really care that it doesn't have rubber wheels. I mean, as long as the wheels look cool. And for most of these, I would say it, it does. Um, the metal base, you know, that really honestly doesn't bother me much either if it has metal or plastic. But they have sharp tampos. So I like that. Sharp printing, pad printed tampos, not, uh, you know, your dot matrix old printer looking stuff that we find on Hot Wheels Premium and sometimes on RLC and sometimes on Matchbox collectors. So uh, that might be a reason to, to pay attention to this line. Uh, 64 Chevy Nova Wagon. I like this casting. I think one of the first super treasure hunts I ever had was this casting. Might have been the first one I found in the wild. Or no, it wasn't. The first one I found in the wild was the Roadster. But uh, this might have been maybe the second. I don't know. Found it at Shopco. I remember that with my buddy Justin. So we've got uh, headlights again, taillights again, tampos. And this one looks really cool. Actually, I like this one a lot. We got the... Again, the new wheel type. That's the same. It's the same as these, which is different. Uh, they're the chrome different. So you can see they make them in different sizes because this one's got a big rear wheel and a smaller front wheel. Uh, this one's really good looking. I like it. I like it the best out of the three so far. And then we got the 2017 Audi RS6 Avant in red and again this is another new wheel type kind of a weird looking wheel pretty nifty though uh audi quattro or six hot wagons i wonder what the next set's gonna be what they're gonna do uh, we've got a little bit of an issue with the paint right there and that'll happen i guess and again, we get details all the way around. So check it out. And the details are sharp because they're printed like tampos, not like the Hot Wheels Premium stuff. So I, that's a cool thing that I just am realizing now when I'm when I'm shooting this video is that that fact alone that that's pretty nifty. So I think I, so that's the other question. Of course, we're going to ask: Is this worth? Not quite three times, but about three times more than a standard Hot Wheel. Um, so far, you know, I'm going to say, yeah, probably for three bucks. That's not bad. I mean, when the Hot Wheels Heritage Series came out, we were paying like, what, three and a half dollars. That was pre-car culture stuff. Now, and some of those only had plastic wheels. So 
I would say this is this is a pretty good value for money for diecast collecting. Uh, then we got this Dotson Bluebird 510. Of course, this is going to be the star of the show for most of you. It's got a completely trash folded card. And there it is. <clears throat> That's pretty good looking. The This has the same wheel type as this. So we got three new wheel types as far as I can tell here. We've got the uh, the two like this that are on the Nova and the GTL. We've got the two like this that are on the Volvo and the Datsun. And it looks really good, actually, on the Datsun. Again, we should swing this one around. And then we got the new, uh, other new wheel type on this Audi. So five-car set. Solid five-car set. I think these will sell very well. Well, we know this is going to sell very well, right? So, what do you guys think about the the fast or not fast wagons? Why do I keep saying it? Hot wagons. Fast wagons was a car culture set. All right, I I think it's really cool. I'm glad I found it. I'm glad I got this. Got these uh, checked off. And and now the question is, is where do I put these models in my collection? Because I keep basics kind of separate from premium. And now we got something in between. Um, they're gonna go with premium. That's where they're gonna go. Because I think that's where they deserve to belong. We got brand new wheels. I don't care that it's not rubber tires, but we do have the metal base and all that stuff. So I think they deserve to be put with the premium models, in my opinion. You guys, let me know what you think. Is this a smart thing that Mattel is doing, kind of putting out this in-between line? And, I, you know, I'm going to say you should say yes, because previous to this, they were still putting out those $3 Hot Wheels, but they were just plastic base, you know. Plastic base, plastic tires, nothing real special about them except for the fact that they had, you know, tamples all over. So, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, we're going to do the Matchbox Collectors line. We're going to start with the Triumph TR6. I'm having deja vu. I think I might have already had this one open. But, you know, me right now, it's really hard to keep track. So. Let's check this out. It's funny because I got I could look at pictures, right? But oh, yeah, the hood opens this way to see everything I got this year. But I'm too lazy to do that, so we just pick it up. Is that metal? Yeah, that engine is metal in there. Metal body, metal engine, plastic base, plastic wheels. I don't think I do have this one, though. Now that I think about it. So you get uh, details all around. Pretty cool. Pretty cool little car. Uh, definitely larger than 164 scale. I don't think they put it on the bottom, but... Because this Triumph Tier 6 is probably a pretty pretty tiny vehicle in person. Uh, so there's that guy. That's pretty nifty. And then we've got this one, the 2023 Nissan Z in blue kind of a kind of a nice color blue very kind of matchy matchy almost with the packaging i mean not quite but not bad all right so this one can you get the box with it Ooh. okay so i think this is a new wheel type so these look almost like they're basic wheels and they'd be plastic but they are not they are rubber this is a Matchbox new wheel. It is rubber. We've got headlights up there. We got taillights back there. We have opening doors. So this casting is also seen in the moving parts line. And this one time it gets kind of the premium treatment. Plastic base still, no big deal. But and it's got rubber tires. Hmm. Pretty neat. Yeah. Not bad. All right. I could do without the opening doors just because you can see those panel gaps and stuff like that. And that's not, a, I'm not a huge fan, but you know, the casting itself looks pretty good. And I like those new wheels. All right. 2018 Bugatti Devo. This is probably the hot one in the set. I would say because it's a Bugatti matchbox Bugatti at that. Get the packaging out of here. And check this guy out. So this one we've got a matte blue, which I don't know, the texture feels gross. Rubber tires. The wheel choice on it. Mm, I don't know. 
I almost would say it'd be better off having these if they could fit them in there. Nah, I'm not a big fan of the wheels on this one. That kind of spoked wheel. No, I just don't. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, the car itself looks okay. It's pretty neat. All right. See, this is not the most exciting one to me, but it seems like probably going to be the hardest one to find. Considering I didn't find it in the first store that I went to. I found all the others, but not, not this one. So somebody wanted to snake that. Um, this 22 Lexus LX, I believe, is a brand new casting, I think. This is an opening parts casting. It's got that wild looking Lexus front end with a huge huge grill that thing's just crazy looking tamp it on and the big complaint here is the wheels a they're too small it almost looks like this is going to drag on the ground like it could barely roll uh, B it's just not my favorite wheel type from Matchbox it's kind of their you know when they got back into making rubber tires cars, these were like the first wheels they put on for their like Supreme Heroes line is what it was called. It was all emergency vehicles. And we still see them on some Matchbox premium stuff today. Not a big fan of those wheels. It, the rim choice, I mean, not bad. The problem is if they would have needed more meat on the tire to more sidewall to make it look, I think, good. So... It's funny because when I look at this through the camera, it looks like the wheels look okay. When I look at it in person, they just are obviously too small. So let's open up the hatch. Uh, it's really hard to get open. And see, to me, like this opening hatch is kind of just pointless. I don't know why. I mean, yeah, I get it. You got a moving parts line. You see this. All it does is reveal the giant pillar in the middle that is holding the body to the to the base with a rivet so you see this giant so i don't know i don't know green too not really the color for this car i don't picture lexus's lexus's in this color green but you know this is more like a forerunner color all right moving on this one, which is probably my favorite in the set. This is the uh, 1994 Mitsubishi 3000 GT in yellow. And this one gets the new wheel with the rubber. Basically, it kind of looks like a basic wheel, but it's not. It's with rubber tires. Very cool. Uh, I don't think this one doesn't. This one's not an opening parts model. This was a basic that now got some premium treatment. One of the coolest castings that's come out from uh, Matchbox in the last uh, year or two, three, maybe. 2021 is the copyright date. But yeah, this is cool. I like this. I like this quite a bit. So I am digging that. Very, very neat. All right. All right, let's do this uh, 77 Dodge van from Johnny Lightning. Mongoose, pop culture, pop culture licensing. So I got the Schwinn Chevy. That's actually pictured here in the back. I have that one. And I needed to get this one. So I collect these van castings, of course, from Johnny Lightning. And uh, so I had to pick up this one eventually. And I will say, though, I did find them a few times in the store and then passed because the quality... Um, was pretty bad here on the blue to white transition. This one is the best one I've found. Um, I've probably gone through about three or four and did not pick them up. This one I decided to go ahead and pick up because it didn't look too bad. So I don't know what's going on with this model as far as that goes, but uh, this one's looking pretty decent. So these are metal on metal rubber tires. I mean, they're heavy. It's a big van. Race BMX. Um, so I like it, and that's why I scooped it up. Very nifty. Yeah, Mongoose. I mean, in Mongoose, I remember Mongoose and Schwinn and uh, what was it? GT. I think GT. 
It was one of the cool uh, bikes back in the day, or maybe they still are. I have no idea. Back in the day, before smartphones and stuff, BMX biking was like one of the coolest things. That and skateboarding and all that stuff. I'm sure it's still popular, but there you go. There's that. All right, let's go on. Sticking with, uh, sticking with our boys at round two. We've got uh, and girls. We've got Grant is racing. Orange Man Bad. Orange Man Bad. Grant is racing 1994 Toyota Supra. So, uh, wow, there's a big, long thing of what to, to learn about this vehicle. Orange Man Bad has broken the record for the world's quickest drag car. Oh, that's neat. With an H-pattern manual transmission more than once. It's a heavily modified 2JZ engine. Goes up to 221 miles an hour. Whoa, that's quick. Uh, when running at 70 PSI of boost. Well, isn't that nifty? It's a record-breaking Supra. So that's pretty cool. Orange man bad. And so it looks all right. I mean, it's cool because it's it's the super casting from Auto World. So I, I dig it. It's got like this orange and like kind of charcoal gray kind of whatever look to it. And it looks pretty cool. I mean, obviously the casting's not modified to really look like the drag racing car, which, you know, it is what it is. Here's your H pattern shifting. Um, but cool variation of this casting. And it, it's pretty neat to get. And I'm sad because, you know, I possibly could have scored an ultra red. Again, if anybody knows how much those things did go for on their website or how much they sold the chases for, I'm very curious. Because I'm going to get mad if it was like the same price as the regular and I just missed out. So, uh, the hood opens on this casting, but I'm not going to bother with it. Uh, we don't want to try to force it open. These were made, you can see the production date on here. Looks like August of 2023, end of August. So it took a while for these to come out or be available, or maybe they were available for a while and I just wasn't aware of it. I have no idea. I ended up getting two of these, one to kind of hoard away and one to get loose and put on the, uh, put with my auto world collection. So overall pretty nifty. You guys let me know what you think, of course. All right, we need to open up an ultra red. So of course we got that guy and we'll have to open up the matching regular release versions to live with it in the display case. This is the uh, one in Wild Cherry. This is, oh, this is premium. What is this? Premium release three, 2023 premium release three. So I still need two ultra reds from this release and they're gonna be kind of hard to get as mentioned in the previous section of the video. So this one in Wild Cherry. Beautiful color for this car, actually. I do like it. It's kind of a, it's definitely a cherry, like a dark cherry, metallic, and it looks good. I like it quite a bit. I actually like it a lot better than that blue. I can already tell. New one. So, if you like the newer style Camaros, that's a cool one for you. Then we got this one in blue, uh, rapid blue. Decent color, too, but... Uh, to me, the rapid blue is more of like a Ford color. More appropriate for a Mustang to me. Or a, or a Bugatti, I guess. Uh, but decent. I would definitely, I mean, if I'm going to, if I was were to put one of these cars in my garage, it would definitely be that one. In this color. I love it. I like that color a lot. It's a nice dark cherry. And then we've got it in, of course, Ultra red and this is it right here on the version a card again it doesn't make a difference whether you find it on version a or version b it's going to be the same thing so don't get thrown by that it is ultra red in the ultra red in this release have chrome rims white tires chrome interior ultra red body and that's it no colored base 
and I believe in this particular set, they go, yeah, they go uh, on the version B car. So any traits from that are different between version A and version B, besides obviously the body color, um, that will be present in the ultra red. This one, it really doesn't make a difference because I don't think there's any difference. They both have the same plate and everything. So since there's no real difference, it's just an ultra red. So beautifully colored, looks awesome. We'll join the collection. Just need two more to complete to that set. All right. All right. Next, let's look at this wild thing. Um, yeah, this is crazy. So shock racers, try me and feel the shock racer suspension system. How to use the tool that makes your car cool. Turn left to loosen or max shock system turn right to tighten or smooth track racing definitely a weird and interesting idea uh funny thing is is you're supposed to be able to try it again how are you supposed to try it oh i see so right now it's you know you can feel it it's bouncy so we'll try tightening that up i'm gonna struggle with this package now so here's our little get it out of here. So there's our little ratchet or tool. It doesn't actually ratchet, but of course it doesn't. Um, that would be crazy. Suspension, and then here's our thing. So wait, which way am I going? <laughs> uh, turn left to loosen. So left to loosen. That makes sense. Ready, tiny, lefty, loosey, right? Wait, are we loosening it oh, for max? Okay, so now it's at max. We're going to tighten it. I don't know how much. Does this thing even work? There you go. That's tighter. What a weird idea, but there it is. Pretty, pretty nifty, I guess. It's a Corvette. Road Champs did some weird stuff. This is definitely a piece of diecast history right there. All right, next let's look at uh, this guy. So this is a 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge American Graffiti Edition from Motormax. We've been featuring Motormax quite a bit on the channel as of late because my buddy... Jay keeps uh, hooking it up uh, with these, and that's really cool. I, I'm, I'd like to get a set of like complete castings from Motomax and 164 scale. I would not mind uh, kind of like gradually chipping away at those. Whoa, this package is brittle. She must have spent some time out in the sun or something on somebody's table for sale. Um, this is not the best like GTO casting ever. I will, I will preface that. I have the yellow one, um, so I'm familiar with the tooling. Packaging out of here. Get the little bits. <clears throat> Comes with a little card. A picture of the car. American graffiti on the back. And then the casting itself. Um, this one. Jeez. It's a little chips of plastic here. Shards. All right, so this is metal body, plastic base, rubber tires, rolls. Uh, we got a little bit of what I would call paint rashing on there, which is unfortunately typical of some stuff that's been sitting around and moving in and out of weird climates and stuff like that. Uh, you will see some paint flaw like that that will pop up. Uh, that seems to be the case with this one. That is okay. Uh, it's just nice to have an example of this in orange. Like I said, I do have it in yellow. So pretty pretty nifty little GTO, though. It's not uh, the best proportions model of this particular car. And it's not the best of Motormax castings. This one does not have really, like, inserted details for headlights or taillights. Of course, it's got a plastic base. It's riveted together instead of screwed together, so that's a little bit different. But it does have the rubber tires, and it's a little bit small for 164 scale. This car is a little bit tiny. Tinier than it should be if it was 164. And uh, Johnny Lightning makes a, a good version of this car. That's, I would say, better. The um, 
The other one that would get close would be like, uh, who else makes it? Uh, Greenlight has one similar, I think, to this year, GTO. I'm not sure if it's exactly this year. Either way, uh, they make one that's a little bit more to scale. So, but still very cool to add to the Motor, Motor Max collection. Just a quirky little collection uh, segment of mine that uh, I enjoy quite a bit. So, very cool. All right. Uh, let's. We have Johnny Lightnings left to look at. And then we're out of here. So, we've got the Mysterion. Uh, one of only 12,000 made die cast metal body and chassis. This is a playing mantis era frightening lightning, and uh, there's a limited edition number on the chassis as well. I'll have to check that out. Lots of uh, literature on the back here that we are not going to read, but uh, here's the frightening lightning Mysterion. I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, whatever. It's wacky. Twin engine. Um, single seater. There are more engines than places to sit in the vehicle. And yeah, it's metal body, metal base. It's heavy. It's definitely heavy. And that is a weird, quirky little Johnny Lightning. So I guess we'll add that to the Johnny Lightning collection. Goofy thing. Thank you. Thank you, Derek Dumas. Appreciate it. The rest of these are a little bit more up my alley than this goofy thing. But uh, here we go. So this is the 1956 Chevy Malibu. This is, again, playing Mantis era Johnny Lightning. Uh, collector's edition. It's anything. This is uh, authentic muscle car paint colors plus Krager mags. That's cool. Again, lots of lots of info on the back. Of these. Um, what? Oh, you know what we should look for. It's always fun. Is a copyright date because I like to get an idea of when these might have come out. So this is 1996 is the copyright date. So it's getting up there. It's an older Johnny Lightning tooling. It's in the older style of Johnny Lightning toolings. You get the little pog or whatever. And then you get the car itself. So this one has plastic uh, wheels, plastic tires, metal body, metal base. These are really designed to kind of fly down a track. Now, I don't know how, how great they would be. I'm not sure. But uh, it's got the little thin lip on the wheel. Uh, for less surface area contact with the track that apparently should make it to just cruise down there at a quick speed. So that's what these older Johnny Lightning plastic tire vehicles were made for, was downhill racing. So it's pretty neat. It's not a bad one. I think it's got some charm to it, and uh, I am glad to add that to the collection. That's a casting I definitely did not have. Another one that I'm pretty sure I don't have is this. This is a 73 Cadillac Eldorado convertible uh, as the official pace car for the Indianapolis 500 in 1973. So that's cool. There was an Indy 500 pace car series from uh, Johnny Lightning, and there's 12 apparently in the series. That's according to the packaging right here. Uh, this one... 1999 is the copyright date. Again, another Playing Mantis. When Johnny Lightning was uh, under the Playing Mantis ownership. And card art's kind of cool. Here's our little card that shows the actual vehicle. That is pretty neat. Nothing on the back there. I do save these, by the way. I put them in a little thing. I got uh, hundreds of them. Possibly thousands. Uh, quite a few of them, anyway. Ooh, look at this. Colorado is used under license. Oh, they put that big on the bottom there. Um, yeah, and this one has plastic tires as well. Uh, metal body, metal base. And I'm going to say I do not, I do not think that I have a version of this tooling at all in my collection. So that is very cool as well. It's nice to check a tooling off of the list. It's just neat. I'm kind of creating, you know, I... I that's why I can't part with anything because I feel like I'm like archiving the stuff and kind of like having a physical example of all these. And then one day, like maybe I'll go back and 
my channel won't be acquiring new things. It will be looking at uh, old things and uh, kind of showing examples of maybe like all the Cadillac Johnny Lightnings or different toolings like that. Like I kind of get into uh, what that would be like and that would be a fun, fun videos to make. I don't know how popular they would be, but you know, for me, it'd be cool to put that stuff together. Uh, but yeah, really neat to get a tooling that I didn't have. So that's, that's awesome. All right. Toolings that I do have, this is, and these are the Racer's Edge. Okay, so this was, it's ch it's a chase. It's not really a chase because they're not the white lightning, but they made these Racer's Edge, which are plastic wheels, and they're meant to go downhill. Um, variations of the car. So you could get like a rubber tire version of this in this Johnny Lightning 50 years packaging. Or you could find a white lightning, or you could find a racer's edge chase. I think that was the way it went. And these are 20% of the production line. Production here is 3812, so that gives you an idea. Well, I guess he wrote it on here. We don't even need to do the math. 762 pieces, likely, is what the run is on this particular one. Um, let's go ahead and open it up. Oh, it came right off the package. I found a couple of racer's edges. Edges in uh, this packaging. I think I found the Beatles, or at least one of the Beatles. I'm looking at the back here, and it wasn't in this set. It was in a different one. This is release two. They did a release one, and I think that's the one that has the Beatle in it. Anyway, uh, this is pretty neat. It's an older Johnny Lightning casting, very old casting. You can see the uh, 1996 copyright date on the bottom. This particular model was produced in 1920. Uh, 2019. Um, so it's an older Johnny Lightning Camaro casting. Uh, it does have an opening hood or should, and we got a little bit of detail under there to look at. And then of course these Racer's Edge plastic wheels that are meant to, for downhill racing, which is why they have that very thin little plastic piece that would make contact with the actual track. It was going down and they're very heavy. Um, pretty nifty. So there's that one, and then the one I was definitely the most excited about is this guy right here, the uh, 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge. Uh, so this was in, yeah, this is also released too, one of uh, 733 apparently. This one is uh, limited edition, the regular versions, uh, one of 3,668. And what I realized, this is a Matador Red. I actually, I have the Racer's Edge version of the version A, which is like a blue car, and I've got the regular one. I do not have the regular one of this. I thought I did, and I don't. So I don't have the regular uh, Matador Red version of this. I'm going to have to try to get that. Uh, so this is a casting that I collect, this GTO. And uh, oh yeah, I guess it's appropriate. I'm like, oh yeah, Johnny Lightning makes the GTO. Um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, even size-wise, these... Wow, actually looking at it, the... Is that actually longer, the Ertl? Or the Ertl? The Motormax? Mm, these are about the same size. Hmm. I think they're both a little bit small. All right. Anyway, kind of see the base here. Base is pretty similar. Um, but anyway, I collect this casting, so I need to get the uh, the regular maroon one. And again, this one has the Racer's Edge uh, wheels, 50th anniversary on the tire there, and plastic. So that is it. That's going to be it for this episode. I guess, I don't know. What's my favorite thing of the episode? The Porsche is cool. The RLC Porsche is cool. I guess it's hard to deny that color is nice. I do think it looked good. Uh, but really getting the wagon set, I think, actually is my, uh, uh, my favorite grab of the week almost. The Ultra Reds are cool, of course, and all that stuff. The stuff from Derek's really cool. Finding the Matchbox moving parts is also neat, but finding this wagon set was a nice surprise. All right, so that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching another uh, lengthy diecast weekly video. I do appreciate all of your support. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe, all that great, you know, fun, fun stuff, and you have a great day. Bye.